distinguished uh, friends and colleagues. I would like to thank the organizers of this meeting for giving me the honor of speaking last. It's always good because all of the wisdom of the day then gets encapsulated, I hope, in the last words that are spoken. But I'm also very happy to have been here to listen to the First Lady of Sierra Leone and the Minister from Gambia pledging, being awarded, but also pledging their commitment and also evoking the commitment of the international community and all stakeholders for the human rights of the women of Africa, but also for the development of Africa and the development of women of, and children, of course, of Africa. So let me join in that call to begin with and pay tribute to their work and that of all the other First Ladies because, of course, I always say that UN Women is about power residing in women themselves, but we also recognize that gender equality, like charity, begins at home, and First Ladies constitute a role model for and a sponsor in society in the political uh, political space and discourse on gender equality so let me also celebrate that and ask for the other day we organized a special event to uh, mobilize first ladies around goal 5 though as I'm going to explain, the whole of the Agenda 2030 and how it works out for women and girls is the responsibility of and should be the focus of the First Lady's uh, work, but it should be the focus of the whole uh, international community, uh, all of the constituencies represented here, governments, private sector, civil society, each one has a responsibility. I also want to, I know everybody has referred to the historic adoption of Agenda 2030 for sustainable development, transforming our world, adopted on Friday. But another historic event happened on Sunday. And the president of Sierra Leone was present, the president of Gambia was present. It was for the first time in the history of the United Nations and the world that heads of state and government got together to make commitments on gender equality and women's empowerment. Never before has this and there were 70 of them. It's a record. And this meant that gender equality and women's empowerment has now come on the top of the political agenda from where it was relegated to the side or to the bottom. This is a very, very important signal and matches the centering of the gender equality and women's empowerment compact and commitments in this universal, transformative, comprehensive, sustainable development agenda that has also been historically adopted. So it's a wonderful coming together and conjunction of these two streams of political commitment and that's what we celebrate here today and also reinforce 
uh, your efforts towards uh, gender equality and women's empowerment. I want to also say what is different, uh, you know, to focus a little bit on what is different in this agenda for gender equality and women's empowerment. We had an MG3 about, it was about promoting gender equality and women's empowerment and it had some very limited targets and it was not mainstreamed throughout the other MDGs. But what we have in the sustainable development agenda is the self-assurance and self-belief and confidence that gender equality and women's empowerment is mission possible that it is achievable. MDG 3 talked about promoting. Now you have a goal 5 which talks about achieving gender equality and to empower all women and girls. It's all embracing. Wherever they come from, whatever their race, ethnicity, status, income or otherwise, so it's an all-embracing goal and also one that is framed as a certainty. This is something really, uh, this, is, this represents a seismic shift in the way this e gender equality agenda is approached in this goal. And the targets that are there, ending violence against women, for the first time, this is regarded as a sustainable development target. You have the target on ending all forms of discrimination against women. This is another major focus in law and in practice. We have targets on ending child marriage and fem female genital, these kind of harmful practices uh, and, and also forms of violence against women like child marriage and female genital mutilation. You have the goal on voice, equal voice participation and leadership in economic, social and public life. Earlier MDG3 only talked about parliaments. But this is about not only parliaments and at all levels. It's not only about parliaments, but it's also about the executive, the judiciary, public service, all aspects of public life. Companies, the, the economic sectors. Uh, and of course, we have a very transformative goal on valuing, re reducing, redistributing unpaid care work and domestic work. This is really transformational. Uh, also, we have the economic rights focus, access, ownership and control over productive assets like land, about the whole issue of land rights, inheritance rights. So he, it's, it's really uh, comprehensive and transformative and this is something that will need to be achieved within a generation. A recognition that things have moved too slowly, that we cannot wait another century, that within a generation, we now need to get on uh, with uh, making discrimination, violence against women, and inequality history. When we meet here in 2030, we should be able to say that this was all in the distant past. And for that, we have to begin today, as we are all doing. Now, there is another change in this agenda, 2030. That, yes, the member states, the governments are the primary duty bearers, and they have to deliver on this. But they cannot do it alone. 
they are not the only actors in the economic, social, and politi even political uh, space. And therefore, the role of the private sector. I want to particularly refer to what work UN Women is doing. We just had on 26th um, September a public, uh, a private sector leaders and philanthropy leaders forum co-chaired with Jack Ma of Alibaba and Melinda Gates. And this was an attempt to engage these leaders and beyond the whole private sector and uh, the philanthropy sector in the implementation of goal five. And we got a tremendous response. And this is just the beginning because really as we have been advocating, and many of you already are aware and perhaps part of the women's empowerment principles that over 1,000 global companies have signed on to, that it must become, and it has been now embedded into a commitment in the financing for development outcome in uh, Accra, uh, in, in Addis. So this is something that uh, companies undertake to promote gender equality and women's empowerment within their own companies in the marketplace by sourcing from women-owned companies or women entrepreneurs, but also by supporting women and their empowerment in the community. So this is a pledge that I call upon the private sector also to take in order to not only put forward and advance and implement goal five, but all of the other goals. Civil society. There is going to be um, implementation framework, we hope, in each country, including, by the way, developed countries. I saw an editorial in New York Times which analyzed Agenda 2030 as if it is another MDG which is only for developing countries. It is not. It is a universal agenda. So everyone will have to establish frameworks for implementing it. Everyone will have to change. Nobody is going to be perfect, found perfect at this point of time, so they don't need to do anything. No, it's not business as usual. It's not finance as usual. It's not the ecology as usual. It's not the planet as usual. There has to be a huge paradigm shift in every country. So that will require a very strong people's movement because politicians, with due respect to those who are present here, don't change easily. But they have pledged to be held accountable to their citizens. So citizens' movement, people's movement must come together to hold, first of all, engage in the follow-up and review process that member states have committed to, but also they must hold uh, their governments accountable for the implementation of this and be part of the implementation of this agenda. And I would also like to emphasize in that context two campaigns that UN Women would like you all to join. That's the campaign we started on at the political level, but it should be at the people's level, private sector, everyone is joining. That is Planet 50-50, by 2030, step it up for gender equality. That's one campaign. The other campaign is, I'm sure, very well known to you. That is the he for she campaign. Where, and I'm so happy to see so many men here because we want you to join the he for she movement. 
Many of the presidents have joined, including uh, the presidents uh, of, of Sierra Leone, Rwanda, many others. And we have, in fact, 10 impact champions, ranging from the president of Indonesia and Japan, and um, uh, as I already mentioned, the two others. So we have uh, a whole movement in which political leaders, CEOs, 10 CEOs, and 10 university presidents are the first impact champions who are going to show the way. But we have 1.2 billion people who are coming around the conversations for this solidarity movement called He For She movement. So it's a huge, huge movement which must therefore uh, be embraced by all of you. And uh, please do join uh, and sign up and engage. Because without, this is one of the biggest transformative um, moments, but also movements that we need uh, at this stage. The 2030 Agenda has successfully created the necessary linkages between economic, social, and environmental dimensions of development. And uh, we really must recognize that without, and this is what Agenda 2030 says, by the way, that without half of humanity, what we call humanity, we cannot achieve any of the other goals. And that's why it's so crucial, the essentiality of achieving goal five to achieve every other goal. So, I, with these words, I would once again thank all the organizers and uh, call upon all of you to adopt the Agenda 2030 as both a personal as well as a social commitment, whether you are in your individual capacity, but also in your capacity as uh, in the private sector, in government, and really make sure that we reach that destination, that we indeed make this mission possible of Planet 5050 by 2030. Thank you very much. <laughs>